So today's lesson is section 11.2 from your textbook, How Light is Produced. So we're going to talk a little bit about um, how it is uh, that we're able to see um, objects that surround us. And uh, so let's talk about um, what's going on with our eye. So here you see, you can see a diagram of uh, sort of like a cross section of, our, of an eyeball. And so uh, here is the lens, and essentially the job of the lens is to take light rays from an object that you are looking at and to direct them, you can see that sort of like the lines are bending here, to direct them to the back part of your eye where the retina is. And at that point, once those light rays hit the retina, then it sends a signal through your nervous system so that your brain can interpret that image and then invert it and see it right side up again. And so as you look around your surroundings, light is going to be entering your eye as it bounces off of objects um, and enters into your eye for your brain to interpret. And so the objects that are around us fall into sort of like uh, one of two categories. And the first category is, uh, is that they are luminous objects. And what that means, an object, uh, for an object to be luminous, it must give off its own own light. So for instance, the sun, the sun is giving off of its own light. So maybe you're thinking about some other luminous objects that you're, you know of. Um, another example would be uh, the flame of a candle, right? That fire at your bonfire uh, and a multitude of other luminous objects. And so if you're like me, then you might be wondering, well, why is it that some substances are luminous? How does that come to be that they give off their own light? So let me give you a really brief description, description of that. And so you may remember uh, the Bohr-Rutherford diagram from last year in grade 9 science. Here's our nucleus, our positively charged nucleus, and then we have our negatively charged electrons that, um, that travel in orbits around that nucleus. Um, that's how we would have uh, discussed it last year in grade 9. So that, you know, at rest, um, at rest, the electrons are exactly where we would predict them to be based on filling those energy levels from the inside out with electrons. And so when it's in its sort of everyday state, we call that the ground state. Now, sometimes when an atom is, um, is bombarded with some form of energy, and that can be light energy, that can be electrical energy, that can be heat energy, um, and then that little bit of energy, what it might do to this electron is, is uh, get it all excited, and then it gains the energy from the input and will travel to a higher orbit than it was in before. And that's all fine and dandy. But then as soon as that energy source is removed, that electron is not going to be able to stay in its higher energy orbit in that excited state. And so that electron is going to travel right back down to its, uh, its original energy level. And then all that leftover energy that it had, it's going to release. And that release of energy is what we perceive as giving off light, making the object luminous. And so again, it's not um, the process of that electron getting raised to the higher energy level that produces light. It's the electron traveling back down to its ground state orbit, uh, orbit that releases that light that we've seen. Now, of course, the other possibility is that the object is not giving off of its own light, its own light, and in that case, we call the, that object non-luminous. And the reason that we're able to see them is because they are able to reflect light. So just imagine uh, that you're reading a book, and it's the evening, and so um, in the evening, in the fall especially, we're seeing these darker nights. And so what do you do? Well, you would turn on the light, have that light source um, come on and um, how it works is that the light now from this luminous source will bounce off of uh, the page that you're trying to read and gets directed and reflected back into your eye and then the process begins where your brain interprets what you're seeing and, um, and processes it so that you see the image. Uh, so, again, an object is either giving off its own light, in which case you see it directly, or an object is not giving off its own light, it's reflecting that any light from another light source back into your eye so that your nervous system can process it. 
So most objects are non-luminous. Um, the moon, people think that the moon is a luminous object, but actually it is just simply reflecting light. And so hopefully you've been making notes as you've been watching this video for yourself. Uh, right here are some homework questions for you to try out, but don't start those homework questions yet. What I want you to do is go to our Google Classroom, and what you'll find there is a copy for yourself of met a worksheet uh, entitled Methods of Producing Light. I'm just going to switch to that screen for a second now. And so this is what it will look like. So you're going to use pages three, uh, 470 to 478 in your textbook, and I'll post a PDF of the section of the textbook that you need to look through to get the information to fill out the worksheet. Here are various luminous sources or sources of light. Uh, what I want you to do is read through those sections of the text and summarize for yourself uh, how each of them um, works, how um, they are each unique in their method of producing light. And then I want you to go online and I just want you to find a diagram um, that will be suitable to create a memory piece for you or perhaps it's a diagram that helps you to make sense of how the luminous source works um, and just copy and paste it into your worksheet so that you have that there um, when you're studying in the future for a quiz or a test. And I need you to have that ready for class on Monday where we will take up uh, all of this information together. I'll do a few demonstrations that will help to uh, further maybe explain or add clarity to some of what you were reading about for each method of uh, light production. Uh, when you are com have completed this, uh, then it will be time for you to work on the homework that I well, I'll have posted on Google Classroom for you. I'm going to just flip to the other screen so that you can see that. Here it is, page 476, numbers 2 to 10.